Right, oh, what we're going to do now is still our offset. So I've got a piece of flat bar, again, it's probably 10 mil thick, pretty hefty. I've marked the centre. I'll have to cut off round here and round there. I'll weld it onto this section of the rim. This will be the offset shaft, which is two inches off centre, from the centre to there. So as that goes round on the wheel, we end up having a four inch throw, if you like, of this distance when it's connected to the hammer. But with the flexibility of the hinge of the hammer, it'll actually go further than that. Yeah, it should do. Hmm. Okay, we've cut our pieces to suit, drilled a hole in there, in this bar, so that when I weld this onto there, I can also come in from the back and just add a bit more meat, just to help it give a little bit more strength. And I'm also in there, putting two 12 mil bolts, and I'll weld those in, because when you put this on, like that, you won't be able to get to two of them, because this will be in the way. So I'll fix that, and that way I can align it up quite easily and then just put a nut on here from behind. So let's weld all this up and Bob's your uncle. 50 millimetres, sorry not 50 centimetres, 50 millimetres from the centre. I've got two bolts which I've welded in on the other side. So I don't know if you can see just there, that'll act like a good locator. So yes, this is all good, all ready for the pillow bearing, which will go on there, which will then be connected to our hammer. So yes, all looking pretty good. Well, look at that. Doesn't that look so much better? With a little bit of paint and that old crappy shocky being turned away. It's getting a bit better, hey? Look at that. Woohoo! That looks really good. Nice and pleased with that. The pillow wiring arrived today. So that will be mounted up there with the shaft on the wheel going through it. So yes, we're coming along. Just finishing off uh, just the last little bit of um, spray paint on our drive wheel. No longer that um, horrible looking I don't know, mustard puke yellow, I suppose you could call it. This looks much nicer. Well, I'm really pleased how it's starting to look now. I've just temporarily bolted the um, wheel on, or just pushed it into the uh, pillow bearing, but not all the way. But with the colourings and everything, it's getting a little bit closer. It's, um, I'm really pleased with um, how it's turning out. That's looking really nice. Well, what do we um, have here? A lump of plastic rod, I guess you'd think. Well, it's not. It's UHMWPE Ultra High Molecular Weight Polythene. That's what this is. UHMWPE Polythene Rod. And what does the advertising say about this great piece of plastic? It's got outstanding abrasion resistance. It's got superior impact resistance. It's non-sticking. I don't know why you'd want to cook with it, but if you did, it won't stick. It's also got self-lubricating properties and excellent mechanical properties. And it's even got excellent mechanical properties in cryogenic conditions. So it can absolutely be freezing cold, really, really cold. Colder than you can imagine. And this will still be slippery. And it'll still be doing its job. Or even in space, it will still be working and still be slippery. 
So because this is UHM WPE plastic polyethylene rod, we're going to use it to lubricate the hammer. Now, what I'm going to do is cut this into 10 mil sections and then on the frame where the hammer will slide up and down, I'll mount it in sections like this. Same at the front and same at the side. So the contact point between the hammer and the mount for the hammer is this UHM WPE plastic, plastic rod. That's what we're going to put in here. So yeah, it should work really good. Um, last a long time and doesn't require any further lubrication. I still reckon it would. We'll have to wait and see until it goes, but that's asking a lot for a, a piece of plastic rod, I reckon. But anyway, that's the plan. Well, here we are again, and we'll be looking at how to um, mount the actual hammer onto the framework. Most people put a square around here and then put some grease nipples in there and then just have grease in between the hammer and the support for the hammer. I was going to do that, but I've been thinking for a while. I've come up with something else. So I'm going to use this piece of I-beam just here, which will actually be part of the main frame. And the same I-beam I've cut in half to form an eye section. Now this bit will get welded behind the actual hammer itself and then look at it this way the ha there the hammer will be in front and in here will be our fancy flash plastic lubrication system which will be mounted like this so that's fine for the loop there but we've got to think of something which is going to keep the hammer nice and straight so it won't be able to go like this nor will it be able to go like that it's going to have to sit there nice and parallel on these bushings without any further friction in order to do that we'll have to zoom in a bit closer and let's have a look at what i reckon is a good idea Well, here we go. I'll try and explain this um, better. Here's what we already know we got. We're going to have uh, plastic in there as uh, lubrication. But the problem is this way movement and this way movement. Now what I was going to do was use these bearings and have them run up and down here. Being mounted on this and that would fix this way movement problem and then at the same time have them mounted inside here so they could run up and down sorry this way mounting them that way so they could run up and down here preventing movement this way so with some bearings just mounted it would work but i don't think really the outside of the bearing should be used for sort of running up and down because you're back to metal on metal again which is what we're trying to avoid so i had a bit of a think about it and i came up with another idea a longboard wheel not only a longboard wheel but a zombie hog longboard wheel now what's really good about this if you think about it is 100 kilo person can go on this and go down the road really fast turn it round, do really big skids on the road with no effect to the wheel. But what makes it even better is it has a bearing in there and then a bearing on this side. And the radius here is exactly the same as the radius inside this eye beam. So, drop in the wheel. That will fit in there like that and roll so nice up and down like this, mounted just by a bracket over here that will have some adjustment on it so the wheel can move like this and also a bit of adjustment so the wheel can move that way as well. Now what's really good is 
the friction with this touching there is hardly anything. Now I'm pushing really hard and there's only minimal friction there so it slides really well. And if it does start to wear a little bit, all I need to do is put a washer in there which will push it closer to this and fix the problem. And as far as this way goes, just need a slot in our mounting on here little slot where this is mounted and away we go fixed so easily adjustable long lasting and this hog wheel looks good i mean i'm imagining now this nice charcoal gray nice blingy yellow wheel sitting there add that to the pimped shocky we've got and i think that's going to look pretty cool and be really functional with these zombie hog longboard wheels. Who would have thought of it? But I reckon it should work an absolute treat.